The island of Guam is a central component of America's growing military presence in the Asia-Pacific, an integral part of U.S. efforts to bolster its position in what U.S. Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter called, the defining region of our nation's future. With the island located around 2,500 miles east of the Philippines, and roughly equidistant to the Korean Peninsula and the South China Sea, Carter described Guam as, an important strategic hub for the U.S. military in the Western Pacific. Compared with Okinawa to the north, which houses over 25,000 U.S. troops, Guam's military personnel contingent is lean at just over 6,000. But that number will nearly double when 5,000 Marines are relocated from Okinawa beginning in 2022. Regardless, numbers alone belie the depth to which the military permeates the U.S. territory. Just three times the size of Washington, D.C., roughly 28% of Guam is occupied by the U.S. military. Guam's importance to the military was conveyed in 2010 when testifying before Congress, in a moment of candor, then U.S. Pacific Command Admiral Robert F. Willard described Guam as the farthest west U.S. territory that we own. Therein lies the problem. For while the U.S. military sees Guam as an indispensable asset, something it owns, many on Guam see the military as a symptom of a greater problem, colonialism. Politically, the United States defines Guam as an unincorporated territory. In United Nations parlance it's a non-self-governing territory. Still others say Guam is a military colony and an unappreciated one at that. Guam has among the highest recruitment levels in the nation. Military service is a generations-old tradition for many families, including Chamorros, who often serve alongside an older or younger relative. According to Bevacqua, Chamorros indigenize their military service, sometimes creating such a strong sense of identity that when serving alongside multinational forces, in Afghanistan, for example, others mistakenly assume that Chamorro soldiers represent the non-existent, independent nation of Guam. Guam is headquarters for Joint Region Marianas, which oversees Anderson Air Force Base, Naval Base Guam, and a 984,000-square-mile testing and live-fire training area in and around the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Guam is also home to a Naval Ordnance Annex, a Naval Computer and Telecommunication Station, home port for fast-attack nuclear submarines and, since 2013, a Terminal High Altitude Area Defense Missile Defense Battery. Chamorro lawyer Levin Camacho says there has been a noticeable change in the last five years. The military presence on Guam is definitely more visible now. Every day you see a bomber or a C-130. You almost get used to it. He's referring to bomber runs from Anderson Air Force Base where, in August, a B-52 Stratofortress, a B-1 Lancer, and a B-2 Spirit bomber made history simply by lining up on the same runway. It was an extraordinary show of strength on an island which could potentially be a launching point for an East Asian military confrontation. There are lots of people impacted by the military presence, Camacho says. They tend to be the most disenfranchised even amongst the disenfranchised. Camacho describes economically depressed housing conditions just beyond the fence surrounding Anderson Air Force Base. He recalls a public hearing he attended where one Chamorro man described jets flying so low over his house in the morning that his coffee mug shook and he could smell jet fuel. Speaking alongside Camacho is his colleague, human rights lawyer Julian Aguan, who adds, militarism is normalized on Guam. It's part of our meat and drink. It's a protein we have to work very hard to break down. The two lawyers pivot back and forth reciting a litany of adverse impacts, from a military housing allowance they say makes housing unaffordable for non-military residents to the military discounts for everything from gasoline and milk to baby formula and toilet paper. Camacho says military service is incentivized to the point that it encroaches on identity. You have this culture on Guam where everyone is very proud of being Chamorro but on the other hand you have this constant exposure to the military and militarization. It's almost part of the narrative on Guam all these great benefits from being in the military. Not everyone in Guam is critical of the military, of course. In an emailed statement, Guam's lone representative in the U.S. House of Representatives, Congresswoman Madeleine Bordallo, said, Guam, which has a historically symbiotic relationship with the military, 
will benefit significantly from the associated investments, from the U.S. Marine realignment, in our community. The notion that the U.S. military is what keeps Guam safe is, very low-level, colonized thinking, according to Dr. Lisa Natividad, an assistant professor of social work at the University of Guam. She sees the military presence as a source of social and economic stress, saying it, vampires are best, through its universal recruitment in Guam schools. As for the marine buildup she asks, why is the government of Japan willing to pay so much money to transfer marines from Okinawa to Guahan, the Chamorro name for Guam, if it's such a great thing? It doesn't make any sense. Back a little bit. All right, back it up. 